Hi, and welcome to According to Pete for whatever month this is, because I can't remember. To build off of the last episode that we did about uh, surface mount soldering uh, and, and techniques thereby, uh, I want to talk today about some more soldering, because I like soldering. Soldering is a skill. It's a craft. It's something that should be well honed by you and me. And I love working with my hands, and I know you do too. So this is something that you want to practice at. It's something you want to build lots of stuff in. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be necessarily a circuit that helps you to hone the craft. Check this guy out. I made this a few years back. This is uh, the Starship Enterprise that I built out of a bunch of wire. Old school, of course. And it's got a little little pentagram there that holds the disc together, so it's more like the devil prize. What are you gonna do? So with that in mind, uh, I wanna talk today about point-to-point -point soldering. Um, and let's jump in. So suppose that um, the physical constraints of your uh, circuit or your enclosure or something dictate how the circuit is constructed. Um, so you might not have a PCB either available or it's not conducive to the construction, uh, or maybe you just wanna build something weird that has a different form. And like I was saying, I love where form meets function. I love when components are all over the place and you can't necessarily tell what's going on in the circuit just by looking at it. I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Um, but first, uh, I wanna lay down some ground rules about point-to-point -point soldering. Basic circuit layout rules still apply. For example, high voltage lines or high current lines, right? Uh, those still need some consideration and respect uh, a high current line is going to uh, throw off a magnetic field, so it's going to couple to things, so you need to make sure that you're orthogonal to yada, 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 you know all those rules. High voltage lines, you need to have those well insulated, and you're gonna see in a little bit why I'm bringing that one up. You also wanna keep in mind um, uh, digital lines, right? Things that throw off noise, something with an AC signal. Uh, those are going to require some isolation and consideration when you're stringing junk all over the place. Uh, high impedance, high gain lines, so like something on an op amp, you're gonna wanna keep lead lengths short, okay? Lastly, things that dissipate heat uh, are going to need some space, and so that's gonna be a consideration, right? So all of your electrical considerations are still present when you're considering how to construct something, but you might take some liberties with how you attach things to achieve a shape if you're looking for it, uh, or maybe you just don't want to work with a PCB, right? You don't necessarily have to. It does not say anywhere, anywhere, that you have to lay out a PCB to make a circuit, right? And I want to drill that point home because I've made all kinds of junk that doesn't take a PCB of any kind. I'm going to show you some of that right now. We built this for a video, an April Fool's Day video, uh, a few years back. The whole point of this was it was supposed to be some kind of time travel enabled, yada, yada, yada. And um, you can see how I built this thing, right? I basically started with a cube, threw a bunch of junk in there. It makes noise, it blinks lights, but there's all kinds of stuff just jammed in there to confuse. And like, what, what does it do? I don't know. And this is sort of uh, a good example of, of my need for form meets function. <laughs> the function is nothing, and the form is a really bad cube. Ha <laughs> ha! This guy. This is a 13 megahertz shortwave receiver. As you can see, there's junk all over the place. Shortwave radio, so the big ground plane on the bottom. Um, I have an extra piece up here for shielding because in a shortwave or in any RF circuit, you're gonna need to shield certain components from other components so that you get any kind of functionality. And honestly, I built this so many years ago, I've already pilfered parts off of it. There are things loose, this one doesn't function anymore. But it's an example of how you can build a circuit in three dimensions without much consideration of all. I'm basically working with a schematic, I'm stringing parts where I need them, and in the end, if I've made considerations correctly, it should function, right? Now, if you go to Maker Faire or something, you go hang by the ham booth, uh, or one of the ham booths, um, and some dude will whip out like an Altoids tin, and he'll open it up, and it's like, what is that spider web of junk that you've got in there? And it's, uh, it's like uh, a continuous wave CW transceiver, right? 
uh, that works at 160 meters or something like that, and it's just ridiculous. Like you close the box and there's a couple of uh, like a BNC on the outside or maybe a couple of banana plugs, and you open it up and it's like, ah, and you don't even know what it is. That's the kind of crafting I'm talking about, and that's the kind of creative circuit construction that I want to encourage everybody to do because it's nuts and it's fun, and it's part of the skill and it's part of the honing, right? Okay, my last example is uh, a tube amp that I'm making. Uh, and this is a monoblock, right? So I've got another one. This isn't a, isn't a guitar tube amp, it's a st uh, stereo tube amp. Well, this one's mono, monoblock, get it? Ah. Tube amps historically have a point-to-point -point wiring setup. If you ever pulled apart like an old Fender or something, you see they've got all the components lined up uh, in parallel on a, a PCB, and that's to provide them, you know, hard mounting points so your high voltage doesn't go wandering places that it shouldn't go. So I get that. Um, I get the need for hard wiring points. I don't like that the components are stuck in one place and then the wiring, you know, your circuit, in my mind, and I, I'll grant you, this is more of an aesthetic thing than probably a functional thing, but I don't like that the components are all lumped over here and then the wires are all over the place. I like the circuit on the schematic to be tight. I like my lead lengths to be tight. Um, and so when I constructed this thing, that's how I did it. Um, I did not take the components and line them up and then string wires everywhere. What I did was I used the tube sockets as my hard mount points. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So first, we're gonna yank off these tubes. One is a 12AX7, the other is a 6922. This circuit is currently uh, prepared for um, testing, which is why you see these extra leads hanging off here. Um, I'm deathly afraid of high voltage. Uh, as a kid, I got shocked by a lamp and that's probably partly what sent me into being an electrical engineer because I was afraid of what I was doing. What you first notice is that I've got some insulation down here uh, underneath the circuit board uh, just in case the high voltage strays, right? And I got some big resistors here. Those have got to dissipate a little bit of heat and just uh, so you know, um, I bump those ratings up by another 100%. So if I'm gonna drop a watt and a half, that's gonna be at least a three watt resistor. So I know that guy's gonna drop some heat. So I want this to be a little bit separated from the other junk and I want it to be able to get, you know, some air underneath the, uh, the plate here. Uh, this tube up here is a 12AX7 that comprises uh, a uh, tone, bass and treble control. Um, and these wires will go to a pot over here. Um, these are coupling caps, uh, really high voltage ones. And uh, let's see, this is the high voltage line that goes to the secondary circuit, which is the 6922 concertina that does kind of a push-pull thing on the EL34s, which go over here. <gasps> the current configuration is that I'm testing the bias points of the 12AX7. So what you see here are a couple of test points that I have pulled out external because I do not like to take a probe in a high voltage circuit and stick it around. I like to have my points set up before I go in. And remember, when working on high voltage kids, one hand behind the back, right? There's a reason for that. You don't want a current to go through your chest. That'll kill you. As you see, I've used the socket points as my hard wiring points. And they're not totally hard because those are tabs on the bottom, on the bottom of those uh, sockets. So they're a little bit flexible, but if you can combine a couple of different tabs together in the way that I have, like I've got a, a couple of, you got two different circuits on a 12AX7, so there's two places where high voltage has to go to, and I have pulled those together and made it a single point for the high voltage. This is the power supply, goes over to here, and that's relatively stable. Now, yes, that point, that uninsulated point is going to have 350 volts on it. That's the way it is. But when this thing is secured down, that's not going to move very much. Uh, and there's still at least a half an inch between that point and the bottom of the chassis and that insulation. Um, now, this is the first part of that circuit. This is the second part, the 6922. That part is not connected yet because I'm first checking the bias points of the 12AX7. Assuming that all works right, I'll connect the other one and then we'll check those. But the point of this is, I am using 
the socket itself as my hard wiring points and that is keeping the circuits in sort of a three-dimensional form and that way I've only got wires running to my power supply. I got one wire running from the power supply and this guy will jump over to here and that's insulated down there and I didn't make a PCB for this at all. Um, so I haven't taken up very much room and when this is flipped over it's a nice elegant looking thing and I'll probably throw some LEDs and junk under there to light the whole thing up like I did the one that I did many years ago. Um, my coupling caps are attached to the plate via double sticky and I'll probably throw something else around there to keep them down. The last thing I would probably draw your attention to is short lead lengths. Uh, what I said earlier was that uh, you want to, you know, when you're, when you're building something that's point to point, there are places where you want to keep your lead length short. And uh, one of the examples I gave was a high impedance input. Now, a tube has a very high input impedance, um, but it doesn't have a lot of gain. So it's not the same thing as an op amp. That said, I've still got really short lead lengths on the grids of these guys. Um, it's just a rule of thumb I like to live by. If it's, if it's an input line, I don't want that line to be long. I don't want it picking up noise, but I will concede to you that it's not a high gain circuit. I mean, a, a 12AX7 has got, what, a gain of 100, I think, in its best configuration. Um, double check me on that, somebody. Uh, so it's not as critical to do that, but in this design I just chose to, you know, make my supply lines the long ones and try to keep my signal lines the short one, thinking that it's going to be a quieter circuit as a result. We'll see if I actually nail it or not. And that's it! So uh, before, before we bail, right, um, I know you guys have got some examples of this yourself, probably better examples. Uh, I know you can't put pictures in the comment section, but you can uh, link to it down there, or you can tweet to us, at SparkFun, and we will see it. And uh, they might get fit, uh, featured in a future video, they might get featured in a homepage post. I don't know, send us some stuff, we'll see what we can do, but I wanna see some really cool examples of this and I know you got it, so don't pretend like you don't. So to wrap up, thanks for coming by. Uh, put your comments and suggestions in the comment section below. Don't bother emailing them to yada, yada, yada. It's better if you just put them in the comment. We're gonna see it right away and we're gonna get something together for you. So uh, until next time, thanks for coming by. Bye.